How was Jonathan that morning? How did he appear to you? I never see John that morning. God love him. It was the night before I had me and John had him. I was in, we were in my room. Myself, I paid it a lot. I'm not sleeping now. Down, down. I'm a bit naked. Jonathan got speed him and my two small ones. And so they, they were all jumping around the bed. They were all playing and he was careful with them and throwing them around the bed and the whole lot. And he used to lie across the bottom of my, big, my bed where my legs was. He was the biggest baby I had, God bless him. I went out to the room and we came back in about 20 minutes after he ate in the food. He laid up in the bed and he was playing away with me and the children again. Careful. Just like a normal child, like there was nothing in the world ever wrong with him. He walked out that door, the happiest boy in the world, and went into bed. And all he said to me when he going out, Mommy, don't forget to leave the tin on the morning for the, the petrol for me for the care to collect the boys for you. So I won't, son. We got up the following morning and we put the four boys to school, got speed him, two boys, and thanks be to God, no blessed mother. My children used to come in every morning and give me a hug and a kiss and say goodbye. But little did I know that that morning was going to be the last goodbye for my lovely two boys, God speed him. You were heading off, Helen. I was going to watch for to collect the wagon. To collect the wagon for the small four smallfellas, yeah. And uh, I went. We were half down the road when John rang me, and he said, "Mummy, you never left me the tenner for the diesel." diesel. Oh Jesus, son, said to me, I forgot all about it. Said to me, I'll ring your auntie Noni. Say, and she'll give you the tenner. Said like, oh, all right, say to me. Now, if there was anything wrong with John. His attitude and tone of his voice straight away, I'd know to be a change. But he was normal at the time. I sent John up to the doctor, so he went up. And she said he was perfectly normal, having the left and the crack with her in the door, and she gave him the ten oh, he was in great form. So he came down here then, and he was here in the air when the first cousin of mine came in. And he spent an hour and a half or so here with him, blagging him there on top of the coal bunker, for going to Thailand to get girlfriends and all this. And, Having a left of him, he said he was in the best form in the world. That was about a half an hour before everything happened. So then he rang me and he said he was going down to collect the boys and could he take him to Donald Park. So of course, like every mother, I said, do sunset, but just make sure they're all safety built it in all right, sunset. And what's the, ri what's the river? Don't let it happen. <laughs> no, he said, mommy, they'll be fine. So God bless, we collected the wagon and we were making our way back up home. And we called into my first cousin, Bridgie and Jim, for a cup of tea. <laughs> And we were sitting there and we were drinking the tea and the phone rang again and he said to me, where are you now, Mummy? So John, Simon, Jimmy and Bridges said to him like this, is everything all right? Yeah, he said, everything's fine, Mummy, everything's going. No, take your time, drink your tea. He said, take your time, there's no hurry, the boys are fine. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so son said to him, I won't be home, I won't be long more, so I'll be home shortly, about a half an hour. So, I was coming through Kilmelik then when my neighbour rang me, Mary, <laughs> and she said, uh, Ellen, where are you? I said, I'm just coming into Kilmelik. And she said, uh, okay, I want to come home straight away, fast as you can. But just before her phone call, John rang me. And I told him I was nearly home, everything was all right, grand, he was in great form. He said, would you want to talk to Paddy, Mummy? And I said, yes, I put him on if he wants to talk to me. So Paddy came on, thanks be to God. That as happy as Larry Bubbly Paddy is, the way he always was, like there was no fear in him or anything, like he was just perfect. So we came down the road here and I... I was going to see the girls, I see the crowd. Just when I see the, the cell tape around the house. From watching the programmes on the television, I knew there was something seriously wrong. The guard tape? Yeah. And I got out of the van outside the gate there. The girls were lovely now, to tell the truth, they'd done a lovely job. They'd done everything very well, I have to admit now, God bless them all. And a girl came up to me and she said, uh, so just get I'm very sorry, she said like that. And my brother was standing behind her. And she said, uh, your little boys are gone. But I looked right over her shoulder, and I could see my tam-tam looking out the wind at me. I said, no, sir, my little boys are in there, so let me into them. No, she said to me, they're gone. And I, no, sir, they're not, sir. But I could feel where they were. Yeah. I could feel where parts of the house they were in, God speed them, and I outside. She said, no, Helen, she said, they're gone to God. She said, they're dead. She said the children was taken off their, uh, their school clothes when it happened. So. How did they ever go up knowing this? Looking up at their brother, their brother was doing it, but the brother didn't know he was doing it, I'd say. So, you know what I mean? That's the hardest part. Know that my total angels went by the end of their own brother, and yet know that he didn't even know he was doing it to him, probably, you know? And my son was sick. There's hundreds of people sick in the world. What would you say to them, Helen, to those people? 
Oh God, no lady of lords. I'd beg him and I'd ask him for all belong to me is in heaven. I would seriously ask him that there has to be somebody out there, love. That, I mean, if they have a best friend. Because at the end of the day, you're a mother's child. You're a husband. You're a wife. You're a mom. You're a grandmother. You're an aunt, a niece, uncle, whatever way you'd like to look at it. And when you leave this world, it might look rosy. Oh, I'll do it and I'll go. But there's no come back for you. You're gone and all that's left behind is somebody like me that's broken hearted, that just don't know one minute from the other why it happened or how it could be stopped. No, please, pick up the phone, phone somebody, email somebody, Facebook somebody, but just do something. Make it known that you're not well. And they w it will help, you will get help. It might be slow at the start, but you will get it. And please take, keep taking your medication if you are sick and you are out there. Don't stop taking your medication because my son didn't take his medication for a week before he died. That was wrong. He would probably be still alive today if he had to take it. Before you hurt yourself or hurt anybody else, pick up that phone and make that phone call because it's your family that's suffering at the end of the day. The people that really love you is the ones that will really suffer. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for speaking to us. You're welcome anytime.